Today I will present you data that we have collected uh, over the years on the role of the um, glutamatergic system in this uh, mouse model of ALS, the SOD1 G93A amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Um, ALS is a specific form of um, lower and upper motor neuron uh, <coughs> disease was first uh, described in the second half of the 19th century by the French neurologist uh, Jean-Martin Charcot and uh, is present in two forms, uh, sporadic, that accounts for about 90% of the cases, and uh, familial, which is the remaining 10%. Um, is, uh, Mm, the many uh, genes have been uh, linked to the uh, familial um, cases of ALS. The first one being the superoxide dismutase one that was uh, first uh, described in the um, early uh, 90s. Then uh, many other genes have been uh, related to the insurgence of familial ALS, like alcin, peripherin, dynactin, and uh, last but not least, FAS TLS and TDP43 that have opened the avenue of the RNA metabolism in the ALS uh, uh, pathology. Um, since the discovery of these uh, genes related uh, mutation in uh, um, ALS, many uh, transgenic mice have been developed that uh, uh, carry um, different uh, mutation, in particular of the superoxide dismutase 1 gene, like uh, the G37, the G85, and the G93, that is the model that we have. Um, this uh, uh, model was uh, uh, described for the first time by Gurney and co-workers in 1994, overexpresses mutant SOD1 in uh, hemizygosis in every cell and is a good ALS model, at least for the lower motor neuron degeneration, because it displays clear clinical and pathological features of the human ALS. The first clinical abnormalities are observed around 100 days. These are two pictures from our own colony. As, as you can see, at four months, this, the mutant mouse is unable to show the classical escape response, displaying of, of, of its hind limbs and keeps them close to the body. On the other hand, a uh, control uh, age matched is uh, upon a tail elevation is uh, displaying the classical escape response. Um, okay, is uh, a good model of uh, neurodegenerative of uh, um, ALS and shows many features of uh, the human disease. For example, a clear reactive gliosis at four months, as shown here in the ventral horn of the spinal cord, as shown here by the GFAP staining, and degeneration of the uh, motor neuron, here chat positive neuron. On the contrary, in the control, in the ventral horn, we don't have uh, reactive uh, gliosis or dying motor neurons, although here is quite uh, difficult to see. Is, uh, these are uh, chat positive buttons that are around the motor neuron cell body. I 
well, it's not <coughs> really evident, but instead uh, this is uh, a degenerating motor neuron. As I said, is a good model in particular for the lower motor neuron disease, spinal cord and brain stem. Human um, ALS is characterized also by the uh, degeneration of uh, specific nuclei in the brain stem and uh, the same nuclei uh, degenerate in this mouse model. For example, the facial motor nucleus here is a four months old control and the <coughs> mutant uh, age match that shows a clear gliosis in green, GFAP staining, and a uh, decrease in the number of neurons, neon N in red. Neon N is a neuronal marker. And the nucleus ambiguous. Um, again that shows at four months a clear reactive uh, gliosis and a loss of neonan positive cells. Similarly, the uh, hypoglossal area, uh, here shown in with chat positive uh, staining that is a marker for uh, motor neurons um, and uh, at four months there is a clear uh, decrease in the chat positive neurons and in the chat positive buttons that you can see here in the wild type but clearly decreased in the SOD1 mutant and here are the counts of the uh, chat uh, buttons. Okay, thanks to the, to the um, mutant uh, SOD1 models, we have learned a lot about the toxic pathways um, involved in uh, ALS, which is, a, is, is clear now, is a convergence, is due to a convergence of many toxic pathways. In particular, we know that within the motor neurons, the uh, degenerative damages uh, go are uh, oxidative stress, caspase, intracellular aggregates, uh, and the degeneration of the mitochondria with the loss of the mitochondrial criste and the enlargement of the mitochondria, and also the um, alteration, the malfunction of the axonal transport. There is also a line of research looking at the degeneration of the um, neuromuscular junction with the hypothesis that uh, this uh, degeneration is going backward to the pericarion. We also know that ALS is not a cell autonomous disease. That means that the mutant SOD1 needs to be present also in glial cells, which are important for the onset and propagation of the disease. Um, many studies have shown that if mutant SOD1 is only expressed in the glia, the uh, mouse doesn't uh, develop ALS. On the other hand, if it's just expressed in the neuron, the mouse doesn't develop ALS. So is uh, um, necessary the cooperation of the two, these two cell types for the development of ALS. Um, the microglia seems to be important in the propagation of the disease. Um, since the early 90s, uh, um, another pathway um, has been involved in um, ALS pathology, toxic pathway, that is uh, glutamatergic excitotoxicity. This uh, uh, hypothesis is based essentially on three observations. 
the increased uh, glutamate levels found in the cerebral spinal fluid of ALS patients that was first described in the, first, uh, in the early 90s and then confirmed in the last decade. The um, observation that up to 80% of the uh, sporadic ALS patients analyzed show a decrease in the glia glutamate <coughs> transporter levels, which is extremely important in clearing the, glut the released glutamate from the cleft and also the fact that uh, primary uh, motor neuron cultures um, treated with CSF from ALS patients were uh, um, dying due to AMPA-mediated excitotoxicity. AMPA is a glutamate uh, receptor. Uh, okay. Okay, um, I will, uh, um, okay, um, glutamate. Glutamate is the most important excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Upon its release at the presynaptic neuron, glutamate activates four type of receptors, three ionotropic and one metabotropic. The three ionotropic receptor, uh, receptors got their name from their agonist, NMDA, kinate, AMPA. In my talk, I will focus on the NMDA and AMPA receptors. Then the metabotropic, that is a classical metabotropic receptor with the seven transmembrane region, etc. Okay, the NMDA is formed of three different subunit, NR1, 2, and 3. NR2 is present in four different isoforms, A, B, C, D. NR3 in two isoforms, A and B. GLUR1 has four subunit named 1, 2, 3, 4, or A, B, C, D, depending on the side of the Atlantic where you are. In Europe is A, B, C, D, because Sibur cloned them in, uh, in Germany. And uh, to give further complexity to the AMPA receptor, each uh, subunit is present in two different uh, isoforms that are the results of, of uh, alternative splicing, <laughs> uh, named FLIP and FLOP. The flip-flop region is here, outside, just before the fourth transmembrane region, and gives to the uh, receptor different gating abilities. The flip-containing uh, receptors desensitize more slowly. That means that they remain open longer and sodium and eventually calcium can enter um, the cell and further uh, depolarizing the cell and increasing the calcium level inside the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, um, glutamate <coughs> is uh, extremely important in the uh, cellular uh, mechanism uh, underlying learning and memory, in particular the so-called long-term potentiation, which is uh, um, widely recognized as the cellular mechanism underlying learning and memory processes. So is uh, a um, neurotransmitter um, extremely important in uh, physiological aspect of the brain function. Usually um, the um, release of glutamate act on the NMDA receptor 
which opens and allows sodium and calcium to enter. This activates intracellular pathways uh, that are, uh, um, and then AMPA receptor is uh, activated and um, it participates in the long-term process. Therefore, long-term potentiation is started by the NMDA receptor and is maintained by the AMPA receptor. However, glutamate has also a dark side because if the um, activation of the postsynaptic neuron is uh, excessive, it starts the so-called glutamatergic excitotoxicity, which at the end leads to neuronal death. I will present you data on both aspects of the glutamatergic function, the uh, excitotoxic role and the learning and memory. Uh, okay. First, some data on the uh, neuronal primary culture. Um, we have studied the uh, expression of the AMPA receptors in primary motor neuron cultures prepared from the mutant mouse. Uh, here is a picture of the culture preparation. In green are motor neurons stained with SMI32, a um, specific marker of uh, motor neuron. In red are GABAergic neuron. Um, this is a mixed type of culture. So, um, and uh, motor neurons are just a percentage. To um, study the uh, composition of the AMPA receptor in the motor neurons, we uh, decided to uh, perform the so-called single cell RT-PCR method that combines electrophysiology and PCR amplification with uh, a recording ele electrode, the neuron, the motor neuron in culture that is recognized by, is, by the shape of the pericarion of the cell body, is clamped. When the seal is uh, formed, a brief recording of the neuron is made to um, learn about its characteristics. Then the cytosol is sucked into the recording pipette. The, the pipette is then broken in a Eppendorf tube and the reverse transcription and PCR reaction are started with the classical protocols. Uh, we used specific primers for the four AMPA receptor uh, subunit uh, and we amplified a region that contains the flip-flop isoforms. So we were able to um, characterize the subunit expression and the isoform expression using specific restriction enzymes that recognize specific sites in, in the two spliced form. And the cumulative. The is translated near the synapses, then? Uh, no, well, we. Because the pipette, where is located? Is uh, on the cell body. <coughs> yeah, is the patch is on the cell body, so is. Uh, but uh, uh, near the synapse, uh, yeah, it is also translated there and there is AMPA receptor inside the synapse and messenger RNA too. But the patch clamp is on the cell body. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the cumulative re results are uh, here and uh, essentially what we found is that in mutant uh, motor neuron, we have an increased expression of GLUR3 and GLUR4, but and uh, in general an increased 
expression of the flip isoform, meaning that uh, the mutant motor neurons uh, um, express AMPA receptor that uh, desensitizes more slowly. So they uh, uh, remain open longer and this uh, and the um, and this uh, um, favors glutamate toxicity and indeed we found that this is the case when we um, applied uh, kinate to the culture we found that the uh, EC50 of the um, neuronal uh, mortality in the mutant neurons was half compared to the controls. So that means that indeed um, mutant motor neurons are more sensitive to the uh, glutamate, in this case kinate mediated toxicity. Sorry, can I ask? Yeah. Well, is they are uh, embryonic. Yeah. The best time is E13, E13 and a half. And yeah, you are right. I'm talking about embryonic and then we have a disease that develops on. Is that your question? Oh, so yeah. Um, well, um, I think that, uh, um, well, in, 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 in these studies we have learned that there are changes in the uh, embryonic culture that are found also in the adult mouse or even described in human ALS. So we think that they correlate quite well with some aspect of the disease. Yeah. And your culture is similar to the one that you find at the adult or is Yes, we haven't done this study, but others have uh, looked with um, immunostaining or in situ at the spinal cord and the results are similar. Um, okay, one aspect of the, no, I'm going, okay of the flip-flop isoforms is that flip is usually more present in the embryonic and in, in utero and postnatal, while the flop is uh, um, increasingly expressed. Here it seems, uh, b because this has been found also in the adult, that uh, um, the flip remains also in the adult, giving the um, uh, characteristic of the AMPA, um, what I said, that is de it desensitizes slower and this increasing, is, is, this increases the glutamate <laughs> toxicity, but uh, in general we have found that what we, uh, what we see in the culture relates well what is uh, observed in the adult mouse before or during the onset of the disease. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, we have also checked at the cortical cultures prepared from the same uh, mice and here we, uh, the AMPA receptor is similar in the control and in the mutant mouse and also the kinate mediated toxicity at two different concentrations and three different times. <coughs> So it, it seems that the mutant uh, SOD1 alters um, AMPA receptor expression not 
uniformus libat in a um, subunit isoform and brain site uh, specific manner. Um, okay, now I switch to uh, data that we have collected in the adult mouse. Um, ALS uh, is the disease of the motor neuron, mainly uh, spinal motor neuron that uh, degenerate heavily. However, in the last uh, um, 10 years, uh, it's more and more evident that uh, cognitive and behavioral abnormalities are <coughs> present in uh, patients with uh, ALS and uh, that all other regions outside the motor cortex are affected in this disease. And there are uh, reports that have documented some kind of dementia symptoms in up to 50% of their cases. Um, for, uh, okay, for this reason, for the fact that uh, increased glutamate levels have been found in cortical preparation from a presymptomatic mice, and we know that increased glutamate can alter uh, um, glutamate uh, receptors, we uh, reason that uh, um, the um, glutamate receptor in the central nervous system could be altered. And uh, we look uh, at this aspect in pre-symptomatic uh, mice, uh, searching for uh, um, signs of learning and memory um, deficiencies. Okay, we um, very <coughs> simply uh, started, we um, quantified the GLUAR1 amparoceptor subunits in three uh, brain regions, the frontal cortex, the frontoparietal somatosensory cortex that hypothet hypothetically are affected in this uh, mouse, and the hippocampus as a control. To our surprise, we found that GLUAR1 was increased in the uh, hippocampus in presymptomatic P80, presymptomatic mice, the messenger RNA and the protein, without any change in the GLUAR1 and the um, constitutive protein of the NMDA receptor NR1, either messenger or protein. Hippocampus is uh, uh, fundamental in learning and memory processes. Is, uh, um, has, um, and uh, the um, increase in AMPA receptor expression uh, could probably alter the a cellular mechanism of learning and memory, that is long-term potentiation. For this reason, we looked at long-term potentiation, induction and maintenance at the CA1 synapses. Uh, long-term potentiation is uh, um, a well-studied phenomenon, mainly in the hippocampus, but also in the cortex, and uh, is uh, uh, recognized as a learning and memory mechanism. And uh, as suggested by the uh, molecular data, we found an increased induction and above all maintenance of long-term potentiation, meaning that the uh, hippocampal synapse is, uh, um, is more efficient in 
um, acquiring some basic mechanism of learning. Uh, usually, um, after a first uh, period of recordings, basal recordings, a so-called train of stimuli is given to the cell. And then, if the uh, cell respond, if the hippocampus respond to this train of stimuli, we have the induction of LTP. Here is the LTP in the control. Here is the LTP in the mutant. Here are the postsynaptic response to the train of stimuli. And they are increased in the mutant mouse. And these is are the cumulative quantification of this area that are uh, significantly increased in the mutant, meaning that there is an increased depolarization in the postsynaptic neuron in the mutant mouse. Uh, are you acquainted with electrophysiology? No. no. I thought so, but this is what we do, and... Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> well... Carl <laughs> uh, Process, um, you provoke. It's, it's long-term potentiation, you said, okay, it's linked to memory, I said, well, but you are measuring it in the tissue culture? In, uh, no, in a brain slices. In brain slices. Yes, uh, you... Yes. Uh, we have done this uh, um, where I work. Uh, there are very, very good groups of electrophysiologists and we work well with them uh, because a neuron is a neuron and uh, this is what uh, it does. <laughs> Uh, you activate the neuron, you depolarize the postsynaptic membrane and you have inward currents and you measure, oh, I mean, this is the neuron. So we uh, collaborate very well with them. These data have been uh, collected with the help of Nicola Beretta, that is an electrophysiologist and hippocampal specialist down in, uh, in Rome. And, uh, Anyhow, this is a well-recognized mechanism of learning and memory, and um, th there is a whole uh, um, line of research on the intracellular pathways that involved the phosphorylation of the AMPA receptor, CAM kinase activation, various um, kinases, and the uh, remodeling of the postsynaptic membrane. Uh, well, there is also a huge molecular aspect in well, this. Is there a correlation with some uh, in vivo cool organism behavior like this? Yes. Okay. Da da. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yeah, now behavior. <laughs> okay. Um, this is, uh, okay, uh, the hippocampus is important in the uh, spatial related learning, in spatial related learning and memory. So after measuring increased uh, ampagluar 1, after um, looking at LTP and found an increased LTP, we asked if uh, at the behavioral level the, uh, we were able to, to see some improvement in uh, hippocampal related learning and memory. And uh, we performed a um, test called the object recognition test. In this cartoon is shown the classical apparatus. The test that we have performed is divided in six different sections. In section one, the mouse is introduced in the arena 
without any object and can move freely to explore the space. And here are the cumulative results. Well, here are the cumulative uh, results. So the two genotypes, the mutant SOD1 and the control, explore similarly the arena. And there is... One question, but it's more by the chemical Yeah. The mutant SOD is more or less active. Uh, is uh, equally mm -hmm. active uh, until uh, the onset of the disease. So the enzyme is active, you get yeah. this mutase activity. Is mm -hmm. equally active. What we have observed, uh, because for a while we used also the wild type, SOD1 overexpressing, that this type of uh, uh, transgene was more active. And someone in our uh, institute thought that it could be a model of the at attention hyperactive disorders, because some of them were really, but it's the wild type, not the mutant. And the wild type uh, doesn't develop ALS. It's probably another type of disease, maybe more Down syndrome, because the SOD1 is in the same chromosome. But, um, okay, so the two genotypes are moving freely in the arena, and there is no motor impairment in the mutant at this age. Then, six different objects are introduced in the arena of object of different shape. And in six, so in uh, sections two, three, and four, uh, the mice are allowed to explore the object. Each section is a five-minute section with a three minutes interval between sections. And here again, there is no difference in the exploration. That is uh, the number of contact that uh, the mouse uh, has with the object, there is no difference between the two genotypes. Then, in section 5, one object is displaced, <coughs> is put in another <coughs> uh, part of the arena. This is to uh, measure spatial novelty. Something has changed around me. And the mutant mouse explore more <coughs> the displaced object instead of the undisplaced object, the O displaced. <coughs> On the contrary, the uh, control explore uh, equally all the object. This is even more clear when we subtracted the number of content uh, of contact in section four, where the object were not displaced, with the uh, contact in section five. Then in section six, a new object is introduced in the arena and replaces a an undisplaced familiar object. Something is new. And again, here, the uh, transgene is exploring more the substituted object compared to the unsubstituted object. In this case, also the control is exploring more the um, substituted object, but the uh, mutant is well above. I mean, is really curious. He, he looks around, he touches, is, uh, he realizes that really there is something new. So the um, hippocampal learning is uh, really good in this mouse before the onset of the disease. 
and uh, we um, we have hypothesized that the increased glutamate before leading to excitotoxicity is uh, provides favorable condition to spatial in formation processing, and this could be may, could be a compensatory mechanism before the degeneration appears. Then we looked at the primary motor cortex, which is the cortical area affected in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. <coughs> we, um, again, here in pre-symptomatic mice, because, again, we were looking at signs, not at signs of degeneration, but at sa um, signs of alteration in synaptic function and synaptic strength. Um, okay, here are uh, images of the uh, M1 region in a control and uh, mutant mouse. Uh, we have performed NeonN and SMI32 to evaluate the neuronal appearance and is comparable in the two genotype, genotypes and uh, GFAP. Both genotypes don't present any reactive gliosis, uh, as it, sh it is shown by the um, absence of GFAP staining. For the motor cortex, we uh, decided to have a different approach. We wanted to evaluate glutamate receptors in the um, pre and post, in, pre in, the, um, in the cleft, in the pre and post uh, compartments. For this reason, we uh, prepared, we, um, prepared a, a fraction, <coughs> subcellular fractions of the M1 region. The brain is uh, uh, sliced uh, in a brain slicer and then the M1, here are two um, images of the cortex from the Paxinos, the Paxinos atlas of the mouse brain. And the M1 region, this one, is uh, separated under a microscope for the rest of the slice. And then, um, after a series of uh, centrifugations, we uh, collected and used the P2 fraction, that is the crude membrane fraction, and contains the pre and post synaptic compartments, and the triton insoluble fraction, TIF, that is the enriched post synaptic fraction. You see here, and here is a Western blot analysis of the purity of our preparation. Synaptophysin is a typical pre synaptic protein. It is, an, is enriched in the P2 and less present in the TIF. PSD95 is a typical postsynaptic protein. It is uh, um, enriched in the TIF and less present in the P2. And again, we looked at the NMDA uh, receptors, NR1, NR2A, NR2B, in the P2 and in the TIF. And we found a significant decrease of the NR2A subunit in the postsynaptic compartment without changes in NR1 and NR2B. The NR1 subunit is a constitutive subunit of the NMDA receptor. 
is always present in the NMDA receptor. That means that in the mutant, we have the same number of NMDA receptors, but with a different composition. We have a more uh, we have more NR2B containing receptors than in the control. And this was confirmed by immunostaining of the layer 5. Yeah. Layer 5 that contains the cell bodies okay, of the layer 5 of the cortex. Okay. In green, neonen. In red, NR2A. In blue, EUST to, uh, for the uh, nuclei. And uh, we found a significant decrease of the NR2A immunostaining in the layer 5 of the motor cortex. And this decrease was even more evident in the SMI-positive neurons. Well, uh, I guess you can see the decrease in the red staining, in the red dots. These are the NR2A subunits. And the, uh, in green is SMI-32, as I said, a marker of... Uh, motor neurons. We looked also at the AMPA, uh, both in the P2 and TIF, and found no difference, mm -hmm. and of the uh, metabotropic GLUAR5 in the TIF, and NR2A in the visual cortex, and found no difference. The visual cortex is a cortical region that uh, doesn't degenerate in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis because the optic nerve is uh, don't, don't degenerate. So, um, okay. so we have a specific alteration of the uh, NMDA receptor. Um, as I said, the postsynaptic, uh, the so-called postsynaptic density uh, compartment is a uh, um, very rich compartment of scaffolding and modulatory proteins. And uh, we have looked at, um, we have asked if the decrease, the unbalance in the NMDA uh, was affecting also scaffolding or modulatory proteins in the postsynaptic compartment. And we look at two scaffolding proteins, PSD95 and SAP97, known to um, interact with NMDA, and in particular SAP97 with the NR2A subunit. Moreover, the um, NMDA is also the activation of the NMDA receptor uh, modulates also the um, modulatory protein CAM kinase 2. We quantified the two isoforms, alpha and beta, and we measured the extent of the uh, phosphorylation of the alpha CAM kinase isoform. And we found the uh, phosphorylation at threonin 286 decreased. Upon the activation of NMDA receptors, CAM kinase 2 is phosphorylated. This phosphorylation starts a process of autophosphorylation at threonin 286, which is important in the induction and maintenance of long-term potentiation. And so we 
look at long cortical long-term potentiation. And we found that um, long-term potentiation is altered, cortical long-term potentiation is altered in this transgenic mouse. Um, after a first train of stimuli to induce LTP, we have a comparable LTP induction in the control and mutant mouse. Then, a second train of stimuli is given to the uh, cortical region. In this case, while the control is able to further enhance the LTP, the mutant mouse is not, meaning that the um, LTP in the mutant is, uh, the response to the LTP is less resilient. Um, we explain this by um, hypothesizing that uh, the system in the mutant mouse is already saturated somehow. And this is confirmed by the um, um, profound long-term depression and other synaptic plasticity mechanism that we found in the uh, mutant mouse, which is probably a consequence of the inability to further potentiate long L LTP. Um, okay, this is the last one. I, okay. um, the NMDA receptor is uh, uh, important in synaptic plasticity, but also in the formation and shape of neurons. From a recombinant receptor experiment, we know that the selective knocking uh, out or knocking in of specific NMDA subunits alter the dendritic tree of the neuron. For example, the knocking out of the NR2A is destroying dendritic clustering. So we uh, wanted to see if uh, indeed the altered NM NR2A um, expression um, was uh, altering the structural characteristic of the cortical motor neur neurons. Uh, we have done this using a classical method, the uh, Golgi-Cox impregnation. Uh, in A and B uh, upper panel, you see two neurons from wild type and SOD1 cortical neurons filled with the Golgi solution. Golgi from Golgi, so is uh, used for more than a hundred years, this type of impregnation. And uh, you can see that it shows very well the pericarion, the apical dendrite and the basal dendrite. And here are the neurolucida drawings. And then we measured the dendritic length and the dendritic nodes. Zero is the cell body. Then on the right, we have the basal dendrite. On the left, the apical dendrite. In C, the dendritic length. Here, zero is the cell body. On the right, basal dendrite. On the left, apical dendrite and these are the dendritic nodes. We found a significant decrease in the dendritic length and in the number 
of dendritic nodes in the mutant neurons. And this confirms the um, decreased synaptic plasticity and um, the altered synaptic plasticity and morphology that uh, uh, is present in the motor cortex of the mutant mouse. So, in uh, conclusion, uh, the abnormal synaptic plasticity and connectivity of the mutant mouse, of the upper motor neurons, uh, probably has uh, adverse effect on the, co the cortico-cortical connection and the formation of uh, cortical networks that probably are affecting also the frontotemporal region, leading to the uh, cognition dementia alteration that have been described in the ALS uh, patients. And here are the acknowledgement, uh, the, my laboratory, Claudia Al Alida Spalloni, Claudia Marini and Michele. Claudia is now doing her PhD in Germany at, at the University of Magdeburg. The experiment, the behavioral experiment and the Golgi Cox uh, was, has been done in collaboration with Martin Amassari Teul of the National Research Council at the Fondazione Santa Lucia in Roma, the electrophysiology, the hippocampal electrophysiology with Nicola Beretta at the Fondazione Santa Lucia, and the cortical electrophysiology with Luciano Domenici of the National Research Council in Pisa, a University of L'Aquila, and thank you.